Hello there, my name is Richard Arundel and thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Today we're going to be having a look at another MATLAB tutorial for the orbital sunlight and shadow duration of a satellite in orbit. So in this video I'm going to briefly introduce the concept behind uh, sunlight and shadow during a spacecraft's orbit and why that might be important. And then we're going to be having a look at the actual theory behind how we calculate the sunlight and shadow duration. And that's going to be followed up with a worked example with plenty of numbers and how to actually perform the calculation for you to follow along with. Then we're going to have the actual graphical user interface or GUI that I've created in MATLAB to speed this up for future use. And then I will share the MATLAB code and book references used for this video. So if you like what you're hearing and you're interested in spacecraft engineering, then hit that like and subscribe button and let's get on with the video. So let's start off with considering why sunlight and shadow duration during a satellite's orbit is actually important and why would we need to know how long these phases last for. Okay, so on a very top level, we could consider that the power system, if we're using solar arrays, uh, is important because if you've got the time uh, during shadow, then that means sunlight's not actually engaging with the solar panels and therefore generating your power uh, can't occur because there is no sunlight. Okay, so another reason would be that there's going to be thermal changes as well, that when you transition through exposure to the sunlight and then go into shadow and then back into sunlight, the temperature will drop and then raise again accordingly. This temperature cycling therefore can cause risks of thermal shock in a spacecraft structure and therefore it would have to be designed to minimise the effect of this, i.e with stabilizing the spacecraft's temperature through um, the thermal subsystem or minimizing the impact of the shadow duration. The, another reason that we've got here why we want to consider sunlight and shadow is that there might be science-based experiments actually as part of the payload for that spacecraft and it might be very sensitive to sunlight and shadow timings for whatever the payload science might be. So that would need to be considered as well and understanding how long the sunlight and shadow phases last for is therefore an important parameter to consider for spacecraft design. So before we head into the more heavier calculations of actually finding out the duration of sunlight and shadow, let's take a look at what the orbit's actually doing and how these shadow areas are actually defined. So when we're looking at the sunlight and shadow times, there's two scenarios that exist with an orbit if we consider this tutorial. So we've got the example where either the apoapsis of the orbit is nearest the sun, or we have the periapsis nearest the sun. Now mathematically, we use the same algorithm to calculate the dur shadow duration, although what you'll find is that in the scenario where the periapsis is nearest the sun, the shadow time will actually be longer than it would be with the apoapsis of the orbit nearest the sun. And that's because in an elliptical orbit, the velocity is actually less than it would be at periapsis. So on the slide here, I've just demonstrated this very quickly because now what that means is that because the velocity is lower than it would be at periapsis. That means it remains in the shadow part of the orbit longer. So we'll have to consider that when we conduct our calculations in a minute. So this slide and the next slide that's going to come up shortly outlines the algorithm to calculate the sunlight and shadow for both the apoapsis nearer the sun and the periapsis nearer the sun. And I invite you now to pause the video at the stage so you could read through the algorithm in your own time for both slides. So for the last slide before we start looking at the calculations, I wanted to show what the true mean and eccentric anomalies are, as I mentioned them in the previous slide. So again, I invite you to pause the video at this point to read through this slide and absorb the diagram. And if you're interested in more orbital mechanics and details beyond this video, I can strongly recommend 
Orbital Mechanics for Engineering Students by Howard D. Curtis, and there's a link in the description below if that's a book that you'd want to look into. So the first set of calculations is for the base orbital parameters that you'll need to conduct the rest of the algorithm, and that is the orbital eccentricity, the angular momentum of the orbit, the semi-major axis, and that's defined as A, and just as a note, that's not to be confused with point A, which is used throughout the diagrams, and the orbital period. As the next few slides are quite mathematical, I will be cutting back on the narration somewhat, and will again invite you, as I have done in the rest of the video, to pause between the slides so that you can take the time to read the content. Okay, so let's have a look at the next step. So in this slide, the first four points are mostly for your information to see where the equation in step five comes from. And it's determining these two routes that will lead on to the next stage of the calculations. So with the two routes calculated from the previous slide, we can now start using these to find the eccentric and mean anomalies, and then the time at point B, and with that, the total time in shadow, and therefore the sunlight time. So this is how we can look at the apoapsis closest to the sun scenario. Now, if we were looking at the periapsis closest to the sun, it still follows the same algorithm, but instead of theta b, we would then look at theta c, and therefore the associated anomalies with that. The next four slides that you're about to see are now going to be a worked example of what we've just covered and there's going to be the hypothetical scenario of a satellite orbiting Earth at a periapsis altitude of 200 kilometers with an apoapsis altitude of 10,000 kilometers. So again please have a look through the slides and pause as you need to to look through the numbers. Perhaps you might want to try the calculations yourself and see how you get on and see if you come up the same numbers that I do. So have a look through, follow through the examples, and at the end of it we'll have a look at the MATLAB coding in GUI. So with all those calculations and the algorithm that I've just shown you in the previous slides, this is what I've come up with in a GUI interface, so that you don't have to repeat those calculations by hand every single time. Now, the aim of this GUI is to amend the altitude for the periapsis and apoapsis in the top left-hand corner, and once you edit them you can recalculate the parameters and all of the other numbers will update accordingly. So we can see in the centre left hand side we've got the important apoapsis and periapsis scenarios with the sunlight and shadow durations expressed in hours on the left hand box and minutes in the right hand side. We've also got the orbital period and on the bottom left there's some extra orbital velocities that aren't necessary for this shadow and sunlight calculator, but they're nice little additions to have since we've already calculated most of the parameters anyway at the beginning. In the top right hand corner then, we can see other orbital parameters such as the eccentricity, the semi-major axis, the angular momentum and so forth. And on the right hand side of that, I've also included the eccentric and mean anomalies along with the angles for theta b and theta c as well as the diagrams that have been shown in the other slides. So the idea is that a user could refer to the diagram and hopefully understand where the angles are coming from and what's going on with the orbit. But of course the important stuff is the MATLAB code which I'm about to show you. So the next few slides are going to be screenshots of the MATLAB code. Now because it's used in the app designer function of MATLAB, there's a lot of other code that's to do with the button pressing and the actual interface. So the screenshots that I've got here are the actual code used for the calculations. And my intention is to release these MATLAB programs 
for free and there is a website link down at the bottom of the slides there so please come along and feel free to download as you wish. So I'm incredibly grateful for the book references that have supported my own space engineering career and there is a reference list here for some of the books and you can find links to these at my website or in the description below and of course I've actually started to compile a textbook a library on my website with the link that's come up on the screen there and my hope is, is that it will be a useful resource for anybody who's looking for spacecraft literature in one place because I appreciate that sometimes looking for these documents and books is hard work and you're not sure where to look so I've done the hard work for you and compiled them in different sections and hopefully you'll find it useful so at least you'll know what books to look out for. So I thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully it was informative and useful for your own studies or perhaps your own spacecraft engineering. And I look forward to presenting another video in the near future. So again, if you liked this video, please subscribe and I'll see you soon. Take care.